We're live. We're live. We're live. Where is Chester? There he is. Chester, what do you think? We're doing it all over again. This is the 11th week in a row, I think. If lives are every week, this would be week 11. Live number 11. Let me flip the phone so I'm looking into the camera. Oh, never mind. I can't do that. Hi, everybody. Hi, Gay. Hi, Marcus. Yep. <laughs> Laura said, setting alarms do pay off. Uh, I'm probably going to read back some comments. I still haven't figured out exactly. I, some people have figured it out how to rewatch this and see the whole commentary. Um, I don't know how, but I'll just prompt any questions or things I respond to by repeating them on here for those who can't see that. Um, I'm doing all right. It's been a very interesting week for me. Um, one of my best friends passed away two days ago, which is honestly devastating. That's fourth one of my close friends that's died in the last 10 to 15 years. People that I went to elementary school and high school with and I was under the impression that I would grow old with them and they would be parts of my future children's lives so it's a tough pill to swallow um even tougher for their families but yeah it fucking sucks and you know I've lost enough friends at this point already that I've channeled their energy and everything I do, I, I try and honor them and live with as much passion as I can. So if they are somewhere else, they can enjoy that. And even if they aren't, they're very much honored. So that was kind of why I posted that. I said I was just trying to keep my head above water yesterday. It's just, it's been an interesting week. Um, Aside from that, things are good. I went to Portland, Maine this past weekend and did a video shoot for a friend's cannabis company, which was awesome. Uh, it's cool to see people you grew up with just absolutely crushing it in life and being highly successful. Um, so that was fun, and I'd never been to Portland, Maine. You know, growing up in Vermont, it's close by, but I had traveled all over as a kid, but... I don't know. I, I think I went to like Sunday River, Maine as a kid for a mountain bike race and a couple other places, but I cannot recall ever spending time in Portland. So it was awesome. Uh, went to some of the best restaurants I've been to in a while, one of which is called The Scale. It's very expensive, but if you're ever in Portland, I would highly recommend trying it. Um, and yeah, it was just a great time to catch up with an old friend. Um, Laura asked, are travel expenses included in your fee? Um, I charge a day rate for my camera work. And then generally I charge a per diem, which covers my food. And in this case, I was staying with my friend who hired me. So he just covered all the costs of eating out and all that stuff. So yeah, that was fun. Um, it's funny. I, as a freelancer, you know, you'll have a week or two weeks or even a month where you're like, oh boy, I don't have any work booked. And that's kind of the beauty of my job. It allots me a lot of free time to pursue my own endeavors, such as working on the land. Um, but it also comes with a great deal of anxiety because you're not sure when the next paycheck is. Um, but it always seems like as soon as one client hits me up, they all hit me up. When it rains, it pours. So it's it's been good. I've got a lot of opportunities coming down the pipeline and certainly work that I will need to squirrel money away so I can get this septic figured out in the spring and get a well drilled once that's done and then eventually frame up my house and all the other projects I want to do. I kind of pumped the brakes on getting the tractor. I got quoted everything and they have more than enough in stock, but I'm not entirely sure I, I'm going to get one this spring. I really want to. I'm just I'm trying to debate where all my different funds should go and what's the most important thing. The tractor itself would make a lot of the projects I want to do way easier and less time consuming. So I'd be more productive at the land. 
but I would also be taking on a $800 monthly payment. And my truck's getting older, so I'm going to have to start thinking about getting a new truck, which I'll probably have to finance. So there's just a lot of adulting going on, I'm just trying to figure out how to balance all of life's financial and personal struggles. Um, the cats are doing great. Ernie really has come out of his shell in the last week or so. I was gone for four days, so he had a little more space for me. And... Um, he seems to just be hanging out out here now all the time. He doesn't really come into my studio, man cave, study, whatever you want to call it that much, but he likes to sit on this couch right here with Chester. I've been busting them, snuggling. He's actually under there right now, I think. I'll go, oh yeah, you can, oh, is that him? We'll go up there and show you him in a couple minutes. Chester was just <laughs> driving me crazy. I'm trying to get video editing work done and he's, crawling around on my laptop keyboard, knocking pencils off the desk. He just wants attention from his daddy. He loves his daddy. He's such a good boy. Frank said, I've had a loss too this week. I took my baby cat to the vet this Monday and found out she has metastatic cancer. I'm sorry. That sucks. That really sucks. Chester's ignoring me right now because he's tired but he sends his love to you frank sorry you're dealing with that look at this little pork roll god you are everything and more why don't you say hi to everyone oh he's so cute look at you he's so sassy so sassy sassy little man with his perfect tail yep perfect tail <laughs> let's see if ernie's down here like 90% sure he is. D Money said you're like Bubbles from Trailer Park Boys. I am fucking Bubbles. <laughs> There's Ernie. He's cuter than ever. Look at his little pink toe beans. He's like, dude, why are you pointing the camera at me? He's super suspect of uh, the cameras. Probably because the whole time that I tried to trap him and when I did trap him and everything I filmed. He's a greasy little guy. He's really cute, though, and he's definitely settling in. Um, unfortunately, I mean, it's a good and a bad thing, but I have a vet appointment scheduled for Tuesday, and I'm not looking forward to having to get him in a cat uh, carrier again. I feel like I'm going to lose a great deal of his trust, kind of like when I had to capture him and uh, bring him home from the land. He was not stoked. And I feel like I've made great strides in terms of gaining his trust and him gaining a, a certain degree of comfort in my house. And now I'm going to have to bring him to the vet to get an inspection of his teeth. And then I'll have to bring him back again so they can do whatever they have to do, assuming there is an issue. A little knackered, to be honest, and just bothered that when I first brought him in, his teeth weren't looked at by the vet. Um... The vet I had on, on the first time I brought Ernie in, uh, she was a little more introverted and I don't think she was very comfortable that I had my video camera in there. Um, she kind of looked at me like I was crazy, but I don't give a shit what she thinks. Um, so this time around, I have the original vet who was in the, the Chester rescue video. I think many of you people saw him and loved his personality. He's a great guy and um, yeah, he's gonna look at Ernie's teeth, but unfortunately it's not the type of thing where I can bring him in, they look at it and then they proceed to do what they do. Obviously that's standard procedure, but it's just a little frustrating on my part because I'm gonna have to get that little ham bone into a cat carrier twice in the next month or two, assuming there is an issue with his teeth. And it's probably gonna set us back in terms of the progress that's been made. Um, Ultimately, it's a sacrifice that needs to be made because it'll benefit him and give some longevity to his health. But yeah, just not looking forward to it. I, it makes me feel so bad having to cram him into a cat carrier, but who knows, maybe I'll set it up, put some treats in there and he'll walk right in and it'll be easier than I expect. Um, so we are gonna figure out the vet problem, or sorry, the teeth problem or why he's drooling. And it'll be good to get to the bottom of that and have a better idea of if he does have any underlying health issues. But um, all things considered, he's, 
he's doing great. He hangs out with Chester at night. They cuddle. I got I caught Chester licking him the other day and, and then putting his paw and patting his head, which was like the cutest thing ever. Um, so yeah, it's definitely seems like I made the right decision to bring this little guy home. And we've just had such inclement weather here in Vermont. And every time it snows or it's bone chilling cold, I just think, thank goodness that cat isn't on my land just struggling to survive. Who knows if he was struggling, but nobody likes freezing their ass off. All right, I'm gonna scroll through these because I've been blabbing to see anything's been asked. Um, Valentina asked, can the vet give some meds to quiet him? Probably, but they'll probably cost a ton of money. Um, I can probably lure him in with tuna. That's what I did to get him in the cage. Laura asked that. I'll find a way to get him in there without being invasive and having to muckle him with my hands, but we'll see. Um... Vengeful Fox says, I was re-watching your videos from the start. You sure have done a lot. I certainly did get a lot done this past year, and it's it's honestly, it's been tough. I've been busy this month, and it's so hard to work in deep snow, and honestly, I just really don't have that many projects that I can tackle during the winter right now. Um, I filmed two episodes this month, which you won't see for quite some time because my videos are staggered. Um, but they were cool. It was me working down by the river, clearing small pine trees, debarking them, and just kind of talking about life and just soaking up the river. There's nothing better than working down there and just hearing the flow of the river while doing manual labor and working with my hands. It's it's um it's a therapy of sorts. It's it's cathartic. It's good for the soul. Um, especially in this day and age, we're so consumed by our phones. I'm so guilty of it. I'm always on my phone. I'm always in front of a screen, like my video work. I have to sit in front of a computer screen for hours at a time to make videos for clients. And uh, going up to the land is like my escape from all of that. And I think everyone needs that to some degree. So yeah, it's been tricky this, this month. And, you know, I'm trying to figure out what I can really film. Like, I don't want to get to a point where I run out of episodes to post and I have to scramble up there and come up with shit to do. But it's just tough doing stuff during the winter, but if I can film two episodes per winter month, I think that will be fine because I'm going to be shooting at least three to four in the summer months, but I'm not getting too worked up and stressed out over YouTube. This is just kind of a fun side hustle for me, and ultimately, as I've said before, it's for me to have a backlog and look back and see all my work I've done and then it's an added bonus that I've got a great group of people like you guys that are interested and engaged in what I'm doing and can enjoy all my hard work too. So definitely we'll see what we got coming. But yeah, now that I've rescued Ernie too, I don't feel as compelled to race up there. And I know all the other cats are in good hands and I have feeders out. So a lot less anxiety knowing that I've got these two in a safe place. I mean, look at him. He's the pinnacle of chilling like a villain. Let's scroll through here and see what we got. Jane Doe said, please stop yapping and just show me Chester. What, do I need to make him an OnlyFans for you? Jesus. There he is. I'll feed him in a couple minutes. Even though it's early dinner for him, but he was riding my jock the last hour trying to get food out of me, so I'll give him a half can or something. In regards to... Um, the septic, I think I touched on this last week. I was in a better spirit about the whole thing, but just got to wait till the spring and figure it out and get a septic design drawn up. Um, I'm probably going to have it drawn up for two living spaces because I want to build my house or camp or whatever you want to call it. And then I would also like to build a double bay garage with an in-law unit above it. So I would like to have running toilets in the both of those. And then the future cabins I will build will be off-grid style. I'm going to build an outhouse in the spring, which I'm looking forward to. That'll be fun. Um, so yeah, that's something I've had to take into consideration with the whole septic thing. I will need a mound system that can accommodate a certain degree of sewage and septic. Um, wake up, just asked, I'm curious what instruments do you play and can we hear you play and sing? I do not play any instruments. 
I play the camera. That's my art form. Uh, my father is a musician, so all the photos or things you've seen with guitars in the background, those would be my dad's. He was born in 1951. He was at Woodstock. He is of the era, but I have a deep appreciation for music, and I think that's why I'm drawn to video, because the pairing of visuals to the music is what inspires me. I hear songs, and I already visualize things in my head that would pair with that music and uh, the culmination of those two visual and auditory experiences to me is probably one of the most powerful things that you can absorb as a human being i'm definitely a sucker for powerful videos with very powerful soundtracks and that's why i use william ryan fritch is music in my videos. I've said it before and I've said it again, but go check him out. He's just got such a unique style and he's an amazing composer. Fart Sack Jack said, hope he didn't eat the brown acid. I hope not either, but I'm sure he ate some acid. <laughs> oh yeah. Let's see what we got here. Sorry, I'm scrolling up. Door open, Paul's suggestion was door open, towel on the bottom, and drape a larger one over the top since he likes to hide. Treats don't hurt. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get him in there with as little traumatization as possible. I've got, thankfully, due to one of our viewers, Sarah, she helped buy me a big cat carrier. So we'll get him loaded in there, and we'll make it as comfortable and hospitable as we possibly can. Jeff said, I have to be careful with vets. Some are money grabbers. My fella's been in nearly every week since Christmas, and the last trip to the vet tried charging me 550 euros for what cost 200 euros on previous vits, uh, visits. Makes me sick. Yeah, that is scummy. I'm definitely skeptical of all modern medicine to some degree. Not skeptical, just it's, it's a racket. Uh, and that's one thing I've been focusing on my personal health this year and just trying to hit the gym and eat cleaner, drink more water, and just take better care of myself. That's one of the big reasons I stopped smoking weed. Um, I'm still open to eating gummies from time to time and edibles, but I'm trying to preserve these lungs because I've given them a beating the last 15 years between smoking weed all day and crawling in asbestos-ridden and PCB-laden PCB insane asylums that are abandoned. I've definitely got my fair share of asbestos fibers uh, on my lungs. There's no doubt about that, which is scary. But I'm a firm believer in prolonged exposure is what kills you. Like, people eat shitty food all their lives or they're out in the sun. But if you don't do it every day, I would like to think it won't kill me. So... Time will tell, but I have my health now, so. We're plugging along. D-Money said weed is bad. Weed is great, but we're all entitled to our opinions. Tobacco is bad. Weed is great, as long as you don't smoke it all the time. It makes you more introspective, more compassionate. Um... Yeah, I'm a firm supporter of cannabis, and I think it's absolutely silly that it's illegal in this country. That's a racket right there. That's Big Pharma trying to control control us and make us consume their shitty products. But that's just my opinion. What do I know? Chester, you want some food? How many viewers are near 100? Should I give them 100 kisses for each viewer? Oh, he's so sweet. He's such a good boy. Yeah, you're about to break this thing, dude. You're a little unit. Chester knows the word Chester. He doesn't right now because he's tired, but he definitely comes when cold. Yeah, he's such a little good boy. Legal here in shitty Illinois, Fart Jack Sack said. I didn't know it was legal in Illinois. I definitely know Indiana, they're straight cowboys about it and do not like cannabis. It's just silly that people are rotting in jail for possessing a plant. It seems like the most backward, uh, illogical thing. But that's just our government. It's a bunch of shitbirds, so it's to be expected. It's time. Oh, 
He's perked up. He knows. What are you doing over there, huh? You little greasy bastard. Come here. You want some foodies? You hungry? I'm going to give you a half can now and a half can later. My buddy from St. Louis, Larry, just sent me a care package. New hot sauce. Anyone tried this one? Old Vienna Red Hot Ripple Sauce, which I think they make chips too. I don't know if anyone has experience. You know what the funniest thing is too? This turkey sent me <laughs> maple syrup, which is made in Vermont, but he sent it from St. Louis, Missouri. I'm like, you have to be the first person in history that sent a Vermonter maple syrup. I'm living in the land of maple. Very funny. Uh, we're gonna do fancy feast, turkey feast and gravy. He, oh, what's that, Chester? Oh, is that the goods? Oh, here he comes, he's stretching. Here comes the beast. Fee, fi, fo, fum. Chester's ready for some beef in his tum tum. <laughs> you are so cute. I'm surprised you didn't jump up here. Dish it out and we'll get to see one of my all-time favorite things about Chester is when he waddles to his food bowl and shakes his little Aladdin pants. He's got serious chalky butt. It's so cute. I'm going to give you a half can now, you little roni. We'll save the rest for later. I hope everyone's having a good week. I know it's Friday. It's the weekend. You know, the weekends don't really mean much to me because my schedule is all over the place. But it does mean that most of my friends are free. So I'm going to watch the Supercross race tomorrow because I love motocross and dirt bikes. And hang out with some of my friends. Probably going to go skiing tomorrow and... Yeah. Gay ass, do the boys have alarm clocks in their stomach? Um, Ernie doesn't yet. Chester definitely does. He, he knows what he does. He comes into my room in the morning. Thankfully, I'm an early riser. He'll start scratching the rug. Oh, you got to see the pants. Go, go, go. <laughs> Look at that trot. Yeah, he, uh, he comes in and he scratches the rug. I had a litter box in my room up until yesterday. I took it out because he literally sat in the litter box and just kept scraping litter. And I know he was doing it to wake me up. He's, he's a smart little shit. So that was funny, but he definitely has an alarm clock. Let's see if we can get some, some of this action. Chester, do you know that there's 122 people watching you eat? <laughs> My favorite is when he crouches down like this. Look at how cute his little paws are. It kills me. They look all short and stubby with his white gloves. Yep, it's a mukbang with Chester. He's going to do a bam bam. We're getting follow up mail here in an hour or two. He's a good boy. That's my little hero right there. I'm his and he's mine. He's got his little, his normal water bowl, his water fountain, and then sometimes I leave dry food out so his teeth can stay strong. But soon this. Big winter coat will be shed and it'll be streamlined for summer activities and rat hunting. All right, I'm going to scroll through some of these comments and see if there's any questions. I do appreciate you guys for being here and everyone that continues to support what I do. It's kind of mind-blowing to me and I've got a lot of love for you guys and I feel like you guys have love for me. So it's a mutual thing, symbiotic relationship here. BCC Fotech said, you're the son of a stalker, wood stalker. Everyone I've met, like you, have been very unique and grounded individuals. Well, I'm very thankful and blessed to have intelligent and compassionate, empathetic parents that I would say raised me pretty well. Um, 
I made my stake, mistakes like everybody else, but I'm just learning to be human. So Kim said, send some of these kisses to Scotland. There's plenty of kisses to go to Scotland. You know I'm coming out there at some point, Kim. Car guy said, yo, what up, car guy? I love cars. I actually might be shooting um, the ARA, American Rally Association Championship this year which would be a big opportunity. I already shoot the Nitro Cross EV rally cross racing, but um, this would mean I'd be traveling probably once a month to shoot cars going anywhere from 80 to 100 plus miles per hour on dirt roads through the middle of nowhere America, and it is badass. If you know anything about rally, you know it's one of the coolest forms of racing. He just absolutely wrecked that. A half can is nothing. He's probably like, Dad, what's going on here? Yeah, look at that tail. You're so silly. You're such a little turkey. Sorry, I'm just reading through all this. Gay said they know the sound of the dish, the food dish. Chester really does. Even if I put it in the sink to wash it, he perks up and will come over thinking it's feeding time. He'll take it wherever he can get it. Sorry, I'm not trying to get my finger in the screen. Take your kilt when you go to Scotland. I'll try. Hi from the Gold Coast, Australia. It's very hot and humid. Oh boy, I've said it before and I've said it again. I want to go up there to Queensland and see the saltwater crocodiles. I'm obsessed with crocodiles. One day I'll see them. Don't go swimming up there, you'll get got. Oh, look at the two boys. Ernie, Ernie, don't know, you little weasel. He just ran back under. Come on, come back out. Kim. Oh, good call. She said, you should sell some prints of some of your photos. That's actually, I have a bunch of prints that I got made a while ago of some insane asylum photos, and I am going to sell them. So if anyone wants to support my work on the land or Ernie's vet bills or whatever it may be, I've got a box full of prints. Um, I can show you guys one of the photos because I have it hung up in my room. Cat calendar is coming next year. I'm just busy as hell, but I will have a cat calendar launching in November next year, or this year, I guess. Um, this photo will be for sale. If anyone wants to buy a print, that is from Buffalo State Hospital in Buffalo, New York. It's one of my favorite asylum photos I've ever took. I call it the gangs all here. And yeah, it's just kind of a poignant shot thinking about patients that used to sit in those and smoke cigarettes and talk about life or whatever they did. So if anyone wants one of those, comment on this live after it's done. And um, sorry, disconnected, didn't pursue uh, selling more of them. So that's, that's the deal with that. And I will have Chester photos and Ernie photos available for print as well down the road. Okamok said, do you know what happened in Mongolia? The only thing I know that happened in Mongolia is Genghis, Genghis Khan. So no, I am not familiar. Um, there's so many current events in this world, it's hard to keep up with all of it. It's honestly one of the funniest, well, it's not funny, it's just, uh, I think people have a lot of doom and gloom about the state of the world and it is sad, there's a lot of crazy shit going on. But at the same time, there's a magnifying glass on everything. You know, people used to exist without phones in their pocket that would inundate them with information and all the bad headlines and good. And I think the world's probably safer than it ever has been. But there's definitely a certain degree of conflict that is scary to see. Even like the videos from Ukraine and Russia of like drones, like now you have to hide in a trench and shoot a drone out of the air with an AK before it comes down, it blows you up with a grenade. Like, warfare is getting too crazy. It's scary. 
don't want to talk politics or war, just talking the state of the world. I think it's, it is overall positive, even though we're exposed to so much negativity on a daily basis. I'm, I'm an optimist. Your new kitty is Frankie. No, his name's Ernie. Oh, you're, oh, our new kitty. You got a new kitty. Well, that's what happened to me. I thought Ernie was Batgirl. I don't know why. I just thought he was a girl because maybe he's a lot smaller than Chester. But he turned out to be a boy. Send cat t-shirts out. Uh, Chester shirts are dropping on the 1st. So I will make sure I post a link with all that. And yeah, any support that you guys want to give me, buy a t-shirt or a hoodie or whatever I have on there and... It all helps, and it'll just be cool to see my YouTube homies wearing Chester apparel. And eventually there'll be some uh, some Ernie stuff as well, so that'll be cool. And plenty of more designs coming. Justin, check out Ernie when he eats kibbles. Most of the time you can tell if he has issues in his mouth by the way he eats. He seems to eat them normally, but I will say it looks like the back gum area in his mouth is pretty puffed up. I don't know. I can't I can't tell you if it looks the same as Chester's or not, but did you remove link to Amazon wish list? Uh it should be under like my channel info, right when you go to my channel. Um someone on the last live said it wasn't working. Uh but I'm pretty sure I updated it. You guys can check and let me know, but it should be on there. I don't have too many requests these days. Cat food always helps and any stuff like that. Fort Sack Jack said, where are you anyway? I live in Vermont. I am in the basement of my home. Why is my resolution set to 720p? I have no idea. I have no control over that. That's probably YouTube dumbing down the quality based on the internet connection I have. Justin, be careful with merchandise. Just sell whatever orders you get. Yeah. Um, not sure how to be careful. I don't, I'm not sure what you mean. People trying to scam me or what, but I will be careful. I already have an online shop, so I don't even have to touch anything. It's all done by, uh, what is it called? Fulfillment service. You order it, they print it, they ship it to you. Let's see. COVID union defector. You're always here. I appreciate you. So take care. Do not take on too much debt. I am living debt free currently. So for me to finance a tractor would not be overkill for me. I make good money with my job and look at you, Ernie. What are you doing? You playing with your brother? Chester, come here. Ernie. There they are, my two boys, daddy's little boys. You can tell Ernie's always ready to just run and hide under something. He's pure survivor cat. Ernie, oh, are you playing with a toy? I have never seen Ernie play with a toy. He just played with my little monkey toy. Oh, oh, he's playing with Chester. You guys are getting a good vibe today. Get him, Chester. Get him out of his little shell. Ernie, get him, Chest. Ernie's like, why did you feed Chester and you did not feed me? I will feed you, young Ernest. I will just do it after the live. Yeah, it's been really great. Chester's definitely been a crucial element in making Ernie more comfortable. Let's see if I can get some pets on the little Ern dog. My little Dale Earnhardt. My little Ernest. Hi, buddy. I have to literally army crawl to get close to him, guys. I slowly slide my belly on the ground. <laughs> Hi. And then I put my finger out, and he goes towards it. Come on. Can I pet your little jowls? Come on. Don't be scared. It's just me. Is it because of the camera? Let me get some of that. Yeah, he's a good boy. All it takes is one pet, and then he's in. Sorry, the filming and petting cat underneath the couch is not the easiest. 
Chester, what are you on one about? He wants to go outside, and then I guarantee if I put him on his harness and brought him out, he would frickin' just come right back inside. You jealous Ernie's getting attention? Ernie, come here. Come here. Come on. Yeah, you can do it. Oh, you can be brave. Be brave. Yeah, be brave for dad. I, I'll get him out of here. Just bear with me, folks. He takes time. Come on. Come on. Yes. Oh, are you showing your face? Oh, you so cute. You are such a good boy. You know that there's tons of people that love you. You know that. Ernie has a little white spot on his chest. You can see it. He's so sweet. I can tell when this cat comes out of his shell and he finally accepts my love, like when he's not scared of me, he's going to be the ultimate little snuggle bug. I almost, I feel like I know for a fact he's going to just crawl under my covers at night and sleep with me. He's so cute. Oh, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to put my fingers in your mouth. Yeah. Amy. Were you just playing with the little monkey toy? You want more petties. Yeah. Come here. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's her. What are you doing? You're causing a ruckus, aren't you? Look at that big butt. You are such a unit. I got 132 people in here. Holy smokes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to dig through here quick. Let's see if we got any more questions. Blue hour out here, Kim said. It's blue hour. Oh, yeah, it's blue hour here. Yeah, the sun is going down. It's this miserable winter weather. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sustain living in Vermont for 12 months out of the year for the rest of my life. I think... Once I figure out getting a house built and all the stuff on my land, I'm going to try and find a piece of land or a small apartment in a coastal town in Spain and buy property there. And then I'll be able to live half the year in Vermont and the other half of the year in Spain and bring my kitties. Mm -mm -mm. How can I send you photos, Kim asks. Uh, you guys are welcome to message me on Facebook, and I'll just go to my request thing. I think I touched on this last time. I'm not going to uh, ex I I I, I don't want to accept everyone on Facebook because it's like, it's still personal to me, and I don't want all my platforms to be inundated with people that I'm not entirely sure who they are. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram. I'm pretty responsive on there. Shoot me a message if you're on there, but uh, if you want to send me some stuff. Fire away. Chester does have a big butt, and he cannot lie. Pula said, you're so brave. Move out of the country. I lived in Germany for six and a half months, um, and I am a dual citizen of Switzerland by birth because of my grandparents who immigrated to America. So I have two passports, and I feel like it would be a shame not to utilize the ability I have to move over there. And I just love Europe. I love Spanish culture. They know how to live. They take siestas. I'm a big nap guy. They eat the best food. And they live modestly because they spend time with one another outside of their homes. And that's something I can definitely appreciate. And I wish was more of a, a thing in the United States. Like every time I go to Europe, I feel super impatient because I'll go out to eat. And it's like, where's the check? Why haven't they brought the check? But they don't, they're not there to just eat and dash they're there to sit and talk and enjoy life because that's what life's all about the company of others and enjoying the moment we'll see if i can make it happen 
if you love surf, you could buy a place near Nazare. I will not be living near Nazare. That wave scares the shit out of me. <laughs> VVY, do not be so trusty on the internet. Who am I trusting? Who am I being trusting of? Educate me. It's not like I'm inviting people to my land. If anyone shows up in my land, I'll be gun toting psycho. <laughs> Pamela asked, why Spain? Why not be a snowbird and come to Arizona in the winter? No offense to Arizona, but it is a desert wasteland. And Phoenix is, I mean, granted, Phoenix is not all of Arizona. I like Arizona. I like the desert, but I grew up in Vermont. I need trees. I need lush greenery. And I need a different culture. Um, Arizona is cool, but I, that's just, that's not cutting it for me. I don't want to live in a giant box neighborhood with a bunch of people waiting to die. And I know that sounds pretty cold blooded, but that's just not my vibe at all. And if it's, it's yours, more power to you. That's what life's about. Everyone's different, different strokes for different folks and no shade to anybody. I'm just, I'm different in that regard. Yeah, the internet is scary today. I'm not trying to meet up with random people or do anything weird. So if if there's one thing you should know about me, I am hyper vigilant. I have traveled across America to some of the most dangerous cities, Detroit, St. Louis. I've snuck into abandoned buildings in the heart of the ghettos. I've done a lot of dangerous and high risk shit. And I always have my wits about me. I'm very self-aware and... It sounds silly to say, but I'm always thinking of the worst case scenario of things that could happen because I'd rather be prepared if shit hits the fan than be standing around with my thumb in my ass. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, this is cool. So the Dodo followed up with me and they should have a rough draft finished this week and they're going to send it to me to get my approval. And then I will hopefully see it in the month of february be launched jane doe said northern arizona has beautiful forests and lakes you are definitely not wrong i feel bad for i wasn't trying to shit on arizona i've been to sedona and i've been all over arizona and it is such an incredible state um and it has so much to offer it's just if i'm gonna get a second home somewhere i would like to go somewhere that has a completely different culture um, granted, Arizona is vastly different than Vermont. There are different cultures within the United States. There's no doubt about that. But like I said, I have a Swiss passport and I love Spanish culture. And ultimately, the biggest thing for me is the food, the tapas, all the Iberian jamón. If you've never had Iberico ham, it is acorn fed pigs. And it is the best. I'm all about cured meats. It's the best meat. They have the best sandwiches over there, the best meats, the cheeses. I just, I love food. I'm a big foodie, so I want to move. And then once you live in Europe, traveling between countries is so cheap. Like you can book plane tickets for a hundred euros and you can do train travel. It's, it's just, it's a different vibe. And it's something that I want to be a part of my life. And if I ever do have kids, I'd like that to be a part of their life. I'm hungry too, Esteban. <laughs> Your channel is going to blow up after Dodo is launched. We'll see. It'll be nice to get some more support on here. I'll probably have to deal with more negativity and trolls and random shitbirds. But ultimately, as I've said, I think in most of these lives, I'm very thankful for the community of people that have supported this channel and my endeavors. It seems like a very positive group of people. Many people who have lived a lot of the same shared experiences as I have and are forthcoming with information and advice and aren't too preachy. I think people have realized that being preachy to me is not the way to go about telling me shit. I'm all for ingesting information and learning from other people, but when people come at you on the internet and tell you this is you're wrong, this is how you're supposed to do it, it's it's not well received. So I think everyone could learn from that. It's like, we're all different. We're all on different paths. Just be accepting and know that people are probably going through their own personal hardships that you have no idea about. And yeah, just be a little more um, compassionate. That's what I've tried to do. And that's what I've learned in the last couple of years. So 
Donna Deanna said, I'm so lost. Lol, what's Dodo? The Dodo is the biggest media outlet for animal content on this planet. Um, I believe they have about 13 million YouTube subscribers. They have a bajillion uh, Instagram followers and they just, uh, they know how to get people's stories out there, even though they do post something every day. So I feel like it's fleeting, you know, people will see your stuff and then it's forgotten about it's much like anything in social media. Everything is just, you're constantly getting berated with new content. What happened now? So we'll see, but I think it'll give a, a good boost to my channel and bring some new cool followers into it. And hopefully not a bunch of People who are going to remind me that Chester's food and litter is too close to each other in that first episode, which I've heard about 8 million times. Yes, I learned. That's, that was fixed so long ago. Even though I do appreciate people's concern. They're only saying that because they cared. So it's not a bad thing. It's just funny. Anybody that watches that video that's a cat person, it's like it's the first thing that gets commented. Donna DeAnda. You need a Chester hoodie, I will have that available February 1st. So just be patient with me. I'll hook you up. Appreciate your support. And Mark said, sending good vibes your way from Santa Cruz. Love your editing and footage. I love Santa Cruz. I was there this summer, and I lived in the Bay Area for about five years. And definitely, definitely love Santa Cruz. It's such a unique vibe. YouTube is definitely... VVY4768 said YouTube seems to have longevity since it first took off. I've been on YouTube since I was probably 10 years old. Like I have a different account that no one will ever find that's like more than 15 plus years old. It's wild to think if I had just made videos as a kid and continued to do so, I could be rich right now. But such is life. It's just crazy. It has definitely lasted the test of time. And I think overall it's the most important platform for me to focus on. I'd say it every time in these lives, but it's a lot to post a video on TikTok every day, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and like just talking about it stresses me out. Like if I get to the point where I have to hire someone and I have the funds to do so, I will so that I don't have to manage that because it's a lot. Let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, the Dodo will be doing a long format story piece on me, so it won't just be like a short minute video. It's going to be a long one, and there was mention of them potentially making me an ambassador, which would be cool. I don't know how many more cats I'm going to rescue in the next couple of years, but I'm usually keen on anything animal related, so it certainly won't be the last animal encounter you see from me. Who knows, maybe I'll have a pet squirrel here in a year or two that I find on the land. Enchanted One asked, did you check on Ernie's teeth yet? Yeah, I talked about that earlier in the live. So when this ends, just rewatch that and you'll get the whole down low. Um, BCC Fotech, I'm in Arizona from Minnesota. Minnesota, wild race soup. I love Minnesota, but I despise the metropolitan areas. Yeah, Phoenix is such a sprawling city. It's crazy. It takes like one hour to get from one side to the other. And there's so many homeless meth heads. It's crazy. It is a cool state though. I've spent a lot of cool, or sorry, a lot of good time in Arizona and have explored quite a bit around there. There's a lot of cool old airplane graveyards and military installations and just unique stuff. Jackie R says, gotta run, have a great weekend. Give Ernie and Chester kisses. Thanks Jackie, you have a great weekend. How did Dodo hear of you? Um, they saw one of my videos. Uh, this girl, e, uh, Edita, who used to work for them, she left her job, but she saw my video of Chester and was just touched by it and hit me up, and we went from there. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Sorry, I'm just scrolling through comments, guys. Uh, 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 uh. Ever seen the painted desert? You know, I'm not sure I have. There's still so much ground to cover in that state. It's so vastly bigger than Vermont. I definitely want to get back out west again. Um, when I left my job at GoPro in South San Francisco, I lived out of my Ford Ranger, the one you see in my videos, for six and a half months. 
And I literally slow crawled across America by myself, sleeping at Walmart parking lots in sketchy areas and not sketchy areas. And pretty much just explored all the abandoned places that I had researched prior and ones that I found along the way. Which I hope to do a book on someday when I'm settled down because I have so many cool abandoned photos. If any of you follow me on Instagram and have dug through my profile, it's pretty apparent that it's one of my passions. Um, now I've just become more focused on a niche, which is psychiatric institutions and insane asylums because of the history that they have and the scale of the properties. And I just find mental health to be extremely intriguing because it's something we all deal with. DL Johnson, why the name Otter Camp? Um, I'm an otter at heart. It's my spirit animal. And I have a group called Vermotters. Play on words instead of Vermonters. Vermotters. And we cliff jump in Vermont year round. We're actually in two weeks. We will be doing our annual ice cutting trip where we are going to bring chainsaws to the ice. I think this year we're going to do it on Lake Champlain. We're going to cut through the ice, make a custom made swimming pole and then jump off a nice 40 plus foot cliff into freezing water. So that is kind of the origins of the otter camp. I just wanted to continue the theme of otters. I feel like that's one of my spirit animals and I like otters. Jackie R, quickly before I go, my dad's family lives up in Rutland VT. I love Rutland. Also I have cousins up in Northern VT. Yeah, Vermont is a great place. Jane Doe, my spirit animal is a slug. I feel that. <laughs> I've felt that on many days. Did you meet interesting people on your trip across country? Any interesting or bizarre stories? I met so many cool people. I like traveling. I like traveling with people, but I like traveling by myself because it forces you to get out of your comfort zone and engage with people. Um, one of my favorite states that I drove through was Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma doesn't really get much of a reputation for much of anything in my experience, especially growing up on the East Coast. You're like, what the hell is in Oklahoma? Why would anyone go there? And I spent about a week in Oklahoma and the combination of the people, the sites, the abandoned places, it was extremely compelling to me. I went through a couple towns that had been totally wiped out, you know, 20 to 30 years ago by tornadoes. And I spoke to the local shopkeepers about the abandoned buildings that were in that town that I was exploring and just had a lot of great interactions. Um, I remember I left my tripod, which is not cheap, which is like an $800 tripod. I left it in a town in Western Oklahoma and then drove seven hours the next day only to realize that I didn't have my tripod and it was far too expensive to leave behind. So I backtracked seven hours back went to the spot where I was, which was across from a small elementary school. And I'm like freaking out because my tripod's gone. And then I just, on a whim, I was like, maybe I'll just walk into the school and ask them. And I walked in and I was all dirty and wearing camo. They thought I was, they didn't think I was somebody that should have been there. And then I asked them if they had seen my tripod and the superintendent had it. And I ended up getting a tour of the town from this lovely lady who had grown up there and raised their kids there and worked at the school and just interactions like that are things I live for, you know? I mean, it's pretty apparent from that Bosnian granny video. It's just, you never know who you're gonna meet. And I always do have my guard up. You never know who's gonna try and cook you up and feed you to their family. But if you don't take those risks, you won't have those experiences. And I'm a firm believer in that. So I hope to continue to travel both America and the rest of the world and meet cool ass people do you have explore videos posted i do bcc photek i like proper people those guys i i will give them credit they do good videos and they have a cool style um i'm not really as keen on them exposing a lot of the spots the way they do especially the insane asylums, but overall for YouTuber abandoned explorers, I would say they are probably the better of the bunch. Um, in abandoned exploring, YouTubers are often the bane of our existence because they go places, they get their video, and then they exploit that place by posting their video. And then inevitably someone in the comments comments where it is and they don't monitor their comments. And then, 
The buildings get more traffic, they get more security, they get vandalized, they get graffitied, and it's just all for what? For some attention. And the videos that I'm posting of abandoned places on my YouTube channel are more often than not more than four to six years old, and many of those buildings have been demolished. So I'm doing things I would like to think tastefully. But the proper people are on the better end of the spectrum of YouTube abandoned explorers. But for the most part, they're all corn balls, and I can't stand most of them. Same with TikTok explorers and all that. All those people have ruined abandoned exploring to some degree or another. And the real ones know to sit on their photos and wait to post them so that they can go back and enjoy the place or so other real explorers can go back and enjoy them. It's a, it's a heated topic in the abandoned exploring community. Much like it is for any other niche, surfing or other spots, people try and protect their spots and people can bitch and complain about gatekeeping all they want. But if I went on the internet and spent my time scrubbing on Google Maps or doing research and found an abandoned building, there's nothing stopping other people from doing it. So the whole gatekeeping argument to me is for whiny little bitches. Sorry for my language. Everyone's dropping their spirit animals. I love it. Gotta have a spirit animal. Linda said, hello, Justin and everyone from Bristol in the southwest of England. Watch all your videos, Justin. Thank you for your time uploading. Just got a rescue cat, a tabby. If that is not a proper British accent to your region, I do apologize. I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> Wake Up said, I refuse to download TikTok. I would have refused to download TikTok too until I found out after launching this YouTube channel that some shitbird had made an imposter account and he was literally asking people to donate money so he could rescue more cats pretending to be me. I, I have not been so livid in quite some time. Then he tried to extort me for $1,500 to gain my account and I told him to get fucked. And he stopped posting stuff and realized that it probably wasn't worth his time. It always boggles my mind the time that people spend trying to steal other people's hard work or scam people when in reality they could focus on their own personal endeavor. And if they spent that much energy on something they were passionate about, they would find success because they're certainly good at scamming people. So why don't you put that into a positive endeavor? But uh, yeah. That's just that. It's always going to be that way. There's always going to be grease balls. So, it's just the way of the world. <laughs> Anybody got any questions for me? We're going on 58 minutes. Probably going to make some food here soon. I got a lot of video editing to do from the video shoot I did this past weekend. But I'm always happy to answer questions, and I love doing this weekly. It's, it's honestly like a little bit of a good form of therapy for me to just kind of talk to you guys and let you know what's going on with my life. It's been a rough week for me, and this has definitely cheered me up. So I do appreciate you guys. Alma Sola. Oh, sorry, there's one more before yours. Someone asked me if I'm familiar with La Selva Beach. I'm not familiar with that, but I've definitely hit a lot of the cool beaches on the way down to Santa Cruz. Almasola, how did your curiosity of abandoned buildings come to be? Do you think you would do more in-depth videos of your experiences? Well, unfortunately, I'm at the mercy of what I've captured in the past, so... Yeah, I mean, I'll definitely continue to explore abandoned buildings, and I've been accumulating footage of all the insane asylums that I've explored for the last eight-plus years, so I'd like to do a short-form documentary someday once many of these buildings are demolished and gone about the evolution of mental health treatment in the United States, and I would like to do a book with all my photography to go with it. So there will be more abandoned experiences to come down the line. How I got into it, I think it was being a kid. Um, I used to poke around abandoned buildings in some rural towns in Vermont and just the curiosity and not knowing what lays around the corner, it's, it's, it puts you in flow state. You're, you lose track of all your problems and everything. You're just in the moment exploring an abandoned building. And it's, it's also a great reminder that everything is temporary. You may think you're home and what I'm going to build on my land is the most important thing ever. But one day I will be dead and gone. My cats will be dead and gone. And nature will consume everything we have built on this planet to some degree. Because the human race will probably be gone at some point. And I think it's a 
a really good reminder that life is fin finite and you need to enjoy the moment and yeah, just do that. John said, meet any drones at Abando. Uh, I mean, I fly my drone at abandoned buildings to uh, get an idea of my point of entry and the easiest way to get inside a building, but I've run into a lot of copper scrappers and meth heads. Pula asked, did you get any chainsaw training yet? I have not. I still need to get chaps and proper safety gear. I do have a steel camp boss that my brother gave me and I fixed up. I just need one of my buddies to come give me a little rundown, but I don't have much chainsaw work to do right now, so it'll happen in the spring. Wake Up asks, how did you end up in Germany? I worked for GoPro, which is the action camera company that people wear on their helmet when they snowboard and stuff, and they needed somebody to go to Germany to train somebody to shoot motorsports, which is my expertise, cars and dirt bikes and fast stuff that's cool. And I have my Swiss passport, so they didn't have to do a work visa. So they paid for me to live in a nice flat or apartment in Munich. And I spent seven months there. And when I wasn't working or on a shoot, I would travel Europe. Jane Doe asked, are you a reader? I'm definitely a reader. I love reading books. I've, it, it, comes in, it ebbs and flows. There's times when I'll read three books in a month, and then I won't read for three months. But I'm a huge reader, and I do think reading has given me the vocabulary and the speech ability that I have. MCK 2021, Justin, referring to asbestos in the lungs, have a look into Essiac tea. I used to smoke tobacco and weed, and then after stopping, drank the tea as directed, and then one day I coughed up some black tar. I cough up brown stuff most days.